Ready. So, Paul, we're going to try this again. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, parts of this, this engine, right up here, is called the magneto, and that's what provides the spark. This opening is called a crankcase breather, and it's got a filter in it, so it uh, allows the crankcase oil to breathe in the crankcase. I'm going to come over here. This is your spark advance. Not, you don't have to get that close, okay? No, it's dark otherwise. Okay, and then there's up against this magneto is when it's fully retarded, and when you go like this, it's fully open, and it's used for starting the motor, which we'll go over in a minute. You got a coil wire to the spark plug right here. It comes down along here and comes the front to the spark plug. This is where you have water and your coolant. Now it's supposed to be filled to three inches from the top, at least three inches from the top. There's no water pump, so this gets hot, it steams, and sometimes it boils. That's okay. But what you're supposed to do is keep track of that level over time, make sure that it's within three inches of the top. Here, this is your motor exhaust like your tailpipe. And this is called a mixer in the manual. It's actually a carburetor. And down under here, there's a lever. Come over here, there's a lever right here. And that sets your, your mixture for your gas air. This over here is actually a plug that's got a vent hole. You can see a big vent hole in it. You take that out to put gas in. That's where your gas tank is, down here. Come around to the, the back side of it. This is your motor head, and your spark plug. This is the intake valve from the gas, so this opens up to let gas into the motor. And you'll see this move in and out when it's running a little bit, and that's normal. Uh, under here, you'll see a valve. Okay. This drains the water is when you empty the water out or the coolant. Down here is your gas drain. You pull this plug out. Well, that's why it's leaking. It's loose for some reason. So that's to drain the gas out of it. Now over on this side you got the nice pulley. That's what's used to drive. And of course you got two flywheels here to uh, even out the power, because it runs slow. Come around the uh, front side. This is where you add oil, this plug. So you pull this plug out on the end of it is a stick, like a dipstick, and there's marks on there for full and uh, needing to add. And um, what you do when you check this, this is like most of them where you have to unscrew something. When you check, you just push it down on top. You don't screw it in. And then you pull it out and check where the level is on the stick. Down here is your oil drain. That's how you drain your oil. So we're going to talk about starting it real quick. You want to make sure this lever is fully... I'm going to come to over here. This lever is fully against here for full retard. It keeps it from kicking back because uh, the, the piston's moving so slow that you, you don't want it to fire in the wrong place for the engine. And uh, when you start it, basically this is, again, this, this is set about two-thirds open. So in order to set this, you rotate it until it just seats, you don't want to over put too much pressure on it, and you come back half and two thirds about there to start it. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because the book says you use one and a quarter, and it doesn't work on this motor for some reason. That was one of our struggles trying to get this thing started. Was a manual told us differently than what this motor uses. Uh, we're going to start it now. So what I have to, you've got this set to two thirds, you've checked your fluids levels, make sure everything's okay, you got water in it. Uh, if you use water, 
for coolant, you should use a rust inhibitor, uh, something like what they call NAP, NAPA from the NAPA, a 1300 uh, rust inhibitor. But it's better that you, once you're used to it and that, use antifreeze, 50-50 green antifreeze. Get the potato. Okay. Just so so what we're, we're going to do now is start it. You got a handle here? That's real dark. Okay. Sometimes okay. you got to push in from the back. Most most engines and hit and misses don't have a handle. You just turn the, the flywheel, pull down on it. <coughs> oh, and I forgot, I'm sorry. This little thing here, this is your speed control. These engines are designed to run at a constant speed. <coughs> and as you screw this bolt in and out, you can change that speed. Okay. There's a little brass. Right there. <coughs> Excuse me, not here. So now we're going to start it. And what I like to do is I like to turn it till you feel resistance on the compression. Okay? If it's cold, which this one isn't, what you want to do is you want to choke it. And you choke it by putting your hand over this carb opening and doing one compression on this. And that'll prime it. Take your hand off. You got this on here because as soon as this thing starts to run the first time it fires or pops you want to move this back fairly fairly quickly a little bit and then as it gains speed go to full or close to full advance that way on the lever and you have to do that at the same time so i'm gonna give it a spin oh wear gloves otherwise you'll end up getting uh blisters like i did See how I move that lever a little bit forward, right here, and then you open it up pretty much all the way, and then this idle mixture, this mixture control, you find the spot where it runs about the best, which right now is about two-thirds, but as it warms up, you may have to adjust, adjust that. Yeah. So that's how you start it. And you notice your intake valve I'm telling you it goes back and forth, that's normal. Uh, you can see the cut there. This just kind of rattles around, you put your hand over here and you'll feel air coming out. That's normal. 